Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast. It's Monday, October 19th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. It's game day for the Chiefs. Yes, Monday afternoon football. How strange does that sound? The Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills will kick off at 4.05 p.m. Central Time today in Buffalo, an odd kickoff time created by the Bills schedule. Their previous game against the Titans was played last Tuesday because of the number of positive COVID-19 tests by the Titans, and Tennessee's schedule has been rearranged, and it's affected a lot of other teams. The Bills and Chiefs were originally supposed to play last Thursday, but of course that couldn't happen with the Bills playing on Tuesday. So here we are with the Chiefs and Bills playing the first of two games on Monday with the Cardinals-Cowboys game to follow. Chiefs-Bills will remain on its original broadcast station, Fox, which is Channel 4 in Kansas City, but I wonder about the ratings. The game will start during work hours. Has that ever happened? Games have been played on Monday nights, Thanksgiving Day. There was that Friday game in Miami about 15 years ago because of the hurricane, that, but that was a night game. Has a weekday afternoon start ever happened? I suspect plenty will be catching the first half at work. As for the game, what an interesting matchup. These are playoff teams from a year ago that expect to be back this season. Both started 4-0 and then lost as favorites last week. It's the first time Patrick Mahomes will have squared off against Josh Allen, who's having a terrific season. But Mahomes seems to get up for games against teams with good quarterbacks. The Chiefs' defense melted down against the Raiders last weekend, and that's a cause for concern. But was that a one-time thing or the beginning of a malaise? I'm looking for Chris Jones and Frank Clark to rebound off their performances from last week. The Bills have had trouble covering the tight end, so there could be some opportunity for Travis Kelsey, but the Chiefs have had trouble all season stopping the run, so Devin Singletary could be in for a productive game. Don't look for the newest Chief, Le'Veon Bell, to be in action tonight. He's been going through the NFL's COVID-19 protocols, and Bell wasn't officially ruled out by Andy Reid when he last spoke to the reporters on Saturday, but I don't see Bell playing until next week. Okay, let's hear from some Chiefs. First up will be Mahomes. He covered a variety of topics from his first meeting with Josh Allen to some confusion when he was trying to vote last week and why things didn't happen for the Chiefs against the Raiders last Sunday. After Mahomes, we'll hear from wide receiver McCole Hardman, who figures to play a bigger role today with Sammy Watkins out with a hamstring injury. And finally, you'll hear from defensive coordinator Steve Spagnola, who says he likes what he has seen from his players in practice this week. The interviews with the Chiefs players and coaches were from Zoom calls this week with media members who regularly cover the Chiefs. So here we go, starting with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, we'll start with Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hey, Patrick. Um, can you just talk about the fact that once again, a big game, Two great quarterbacks. Josh Allen's done great. He's like ranked second. You're ranked fourth when it comes to passing yards. Does that just get your competitive juices at a higher level? You're not facing him, but you're both on the stage showcasing your great talent. I think it's it's always awesome to go against a great opponent, Uh, going against the Buffalo Bills. I mean, they have a great defense. They have a great offense, great special teams, just an overall great team. And so uh, anytime you get to play on these games, Monday evening, night, whatever it is, and you get to go up against a great opponent, it's always an exciting challenge, and I'm I'm ready for it. Let's go next to Breland Moore. Go ahead, Breland. Good morning, Patrick. To kind of go off of Karen's question here, we've seen you go up against young quarterbacks uh, really and truthfully, uh, three out of the five games so far this year, and a lot of them, you know, you have relationships with prior to. Are you friends with Josh Allen? What do you know about him? And, you know, have you guys kind of crossed paths, not on the field per se, but, you know, in just life in general? Yeah, we've crossed paths a few times. I mean, uh, I really respect his game. I mean, he's been someone that's gotten better and better every single year. And from everything that I've heard and everybody that I've been around, he work, he works his tail off. So uh, he's, he's a guy that I know I'll be facing a lot uh, as our careers go on. And uh, it'll be a great challenge and a, a great opportunity for me to get to go against uh, that team and, and him at quarterback. Let's go next to Vahe Gregorian. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Patrick, uh, I have two election related questions. Brad, if you don't mind, I'll just ask one at a time. Would you mind taking us through what the confusion was when you were trying to vote and discovered you weren't registered and, and, and how meaningful that was? And I'll come back with a second one. 
Yeah, I think the the confusion was that I, I, when I registered, uh, I was registering in Texas uh, with my house in Texas, and I'm kind of really close to a county line. And I had sent it, and I knew I'd put the right county in, uh, but it somehow got sent to another county and, and then got canceled. And they and I wasn't, uh, they didn't really let me know. And so whenever I I went to kind of go get your absentee voting type stuff, I realized that I, I wasn't registered to vote still, and I thought I I had sent it in, um, but. Obviously, I was able to do it again. I was able to stay on top of it and making sure that it, I got registered and everything like that. And uh, and now uh, be able to, being able to be a registered voter, I plan on using my voice and going out there and doing that. And that was just the follow up, Patrick. You, you've made this a, a sort of a platform of yours. I, I wonder, we're less than three weeks to the election now. Will you be doing anything more in particular to raise awareness and, and just get your voice heard about getting our voices heard? Yeah, I mean, I'll do I'll do what I can, uh, and I think the biggest thing is, like you said, is just using your voice. Uh, no matter what that voice is, whatever your opinion is, it's using your voice that you've been you have the platform and you've been given uh, in a very important year um, to go out there and and do what you can to be a part of this country and be a part of trying to make us uh, better every single day. Let's go next to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Patrick, um, to follow up on that, actually, so Arrowhead will be a polling location uh, here for the general election, and you and your foundation, 15 and the, the Mahomies, played a huge role in making that happen. Can you walk us through that process and why that was important to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, it started off with great communication with the organization and the Kansas City Chiefs of, of trying to use Arrowhead as such a historic place, such a great spot in this community as a place for people to come together and vote and use their voice. And so, uh, with talking with them and the, the people in my foundation, we were able to make that stuff come to life. And I'm proud of this organization and my foundation for being able to do that, along with other guys on the team who were really impactful uh, of, of making it a polling place so everybody can use their voice and have a neutral ground to go do it. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.B. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Patrick. Good afternoon. In light of Sammy Watkins' uh, hamstring injury, um, McCole Hartman is probably going to see a bigger role. How better equipped is he, in your opinion, to handle it this year compared to last year when he had to fill in? I mean, obviously, he's got more and more experience. I thought he did a pretty good job last year when he when he filled in uh, for Tyreek and for I think it was Sammy at some points. Uh, so uh, he he's a guy that's ready for the challenge. Uh, it's about stepping up and and being prepared. And uh, you you, under, you know what he can do when he gets the ball in his hands. So uh, it's a, it's about just making sure that he's prepared and ready to go. And I'm sure he will be. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Patrick, um, a couple things. Uh, first of all, a lot of the numbers will show that you all are, be are a better offensive team when Sammy's on the field than when he's not. I was wondering if there's some things that he does that maybe don't show up in the stat sheet that make you guys a better offensive team. And the second thing is, I was wondering if you had any kind of recruiting pitch for Le'Veon Bell. Uh, well, well, the first part, I mean, obviously – uh, having Sammy out there is a, is a is a huge plus. I mean, he's someone who does everything. I mean, he's able to catch and be explosive. He blocks very well. Uh, he he gets other guys open. And whenever you have those type of playmakers on the field, defenses have to really really take notice of that. And so that I think that's why you see the the the, the slot, subtle differences and the production and stuff like that. But you're hoping guys can step up like McColl and and Pringle and all these other guys. Uh, and make and make up for some of that production. And then uh, with the the Le'Veon thing, I, I leave that stuff up to. To Veach and them, obviously a, a tremendous player, uh, someone that can do it all, uh, catch the ball, run the ball. Um, but I, I just – I let Veach and them handle everything like that. And then when whoever's in this locker room, uh, we, we make sure they're ready to go and make and make plays on Sundays. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, Patrick, uh, two things real quick. One, uh, whatever happened to the uh, con competition that was going to happen between you and Josh Allen and – and who could throw the ball the, the furthest? Did that ever come about? And will it ever come about? And then as a follow-up, this was kind of a unique one where you could actually sit back and watch their game. And I'm just curious what, what you do when you got your next opponent and you get a chance to, to sit. And do you take in the whole game? Do you take notes? What do you do when watching the game? Yes. Uh, the first part of your question, I mean, obviously with the, the COVID uh, situation going on this offseason, we weren't able to get anything like that going. And, uh, I mean – We'll see what happens in the in the future. I mean, I'm usually in Texas. He's usually in I think in California. So we'll we'll see we'll see what happens with that in the future. But I'm always up to any any challenge and everything like that. And so uh, and then the set the second part of your question, you, you ask it one more time for me, please. 
Sorry. Yes. Uh, just uh, what what get a chance to watch the Bills like get a, an opponent. You know, usually you guys are always playing at the same time. You don't get a chance to get that extra look at them. I'm just curious what you do when you do get that opportunity. So, yeah, usually in the games, I, I don't uh, necessarily watch uh, the other offense that much other than just trying to see if we're third down, fourth down or whatever's going on in the game. Um, I'm usually focusing on what we're trying to do the next drive or the next series or later on in the game or seeing what the defenses uh, gave to me in the previous series. Um, but I, I've, I've had a chance to watch their offense a couple times, just playing similar opponents uh, like the Raiders and, uh, and other teams. And so I was able to see them, and they're, they're a very, very good offense that does a lot of great things, and Josh is playing at a very high level. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Um, Brad, I'll have a follow-up to this, but you've always been a, a pretty candid critic of, of your own play. I'm wondering what, when you watch film of Sunday's game, what, what you thought. Yeah, I mean, just we just didn't execute like we wanted to the entire game. I mean, we had some shot, we had some shots here and there that we hit, and we were able to go down there and, and score score some points. But we didn't, we just didn't execute and play to the level and the efficiency that we're used to playing at. Um, and when you play against another team that, that's a great opponent, and you're not executing at a high level and putting your defense in in bad situations, uh, usually you usually don't win the football game. And so uh, we understand that and know that we can't just rely on the big play. We got to make sure that we execute at a high level. And uh, when the big play comes, we, we have to find a way to hit it and, and win the football game. And the second thing is you were out of the pocket a lot on Sunday. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. I mean, obviously, the, they, they did a good job with their game plan of covering the guys that I, I wanted to go to um, and, and getting some pressure. But I also did I, – I bailed on the pocket sometimes, and I, I ran out of the pocket sometimes. So it's a combination of a lot of things, but it all, goes, it all really goes down to execution – and uh, being able to execute from the pocket. And whenever the I do get outside the pocket, I have to make plays happen too. So uh, hopefully this week we'll come out and play another great defense and uh, hopefully come out with a little bit better uh, effort on our end. We got three hands up. We'll just go right down the line. Harold, Pete, and then Sam. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Pat. Uh, you kind of mentioned – Sam kind of mentioned what, the, uh, what I was going to ask you first, but we'll move on with that. Monday, 4 o'clock, usually reserved for like a JV team or a high school football practice, and now it's an NFL game. Just your overall thoughts on playing in the afternoon on Monday, how weird that is, and do you get with the mayor to try to get people out of work early to try to get them a little letter to watch the ball game? Uh, well, I, never, I didn't think about that uh, with the mayor, but uh, hopefully people are able to watch it uh, whenever they get off work and everything like that. But for me, it's just like any other football game. Uh, we understood the challenges coming into this season. And, and had to be able to expect the unexpected. And uh, it's going to be a Monday game, which will be our third Monday game in, in four weeks or whatever it is. And so we're excited for the opportunity to get to play in front of everybody and get to play against a great football team. Go to Pete Sweeney. Go to Pete. Pat, it seems like a lot of the good quarterbacks in the league, everyone always has his go-to guy for you on third and long or you're looking for somebody. It, it tends to be Travis Kelsey. What about – um, that relationship, do you think, has made him develop into what has become your go-to guy? I just think he does a great job of finding ways to get open, even after the routes uh, that he runs might not be there. Uh, he's a guy who just continues to work, um, and he continues to make sure that he's working and trying to get in my vision. And so when I do make these scrambles sometimes, he, you see him being the, the recipient of that. Of that. Um, but uh, that, as well as a lot of those third and longs, Ty Ty Tyreek and McColl and those guys are kind of getting double teamed uh, over the top, so he's able to work. Um, so it's a combination of those things, and uh, it's something that we're just going to continue to try to get better at and stay out of those third and longs as much as possible. Let's go last to Sam Mellinger. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Um, you, I think this is fair to say you're a naturally like positive person. Um, I, I also think that even after some wins this year um, in the press conference, you've been pretty clear that you weren't happy with the performance. I'm, I'm just curious, in general, your leadership style, if you feel like it's evolved in the last couple of years, if you're more comfortable um, or if you feel – you know, more of a need to sort of challenge rather than encourage? Uh, not necessarily. I think the, the biggest thing, I've always been uh, someone that, that loves to challenge uh, the guys in our locker room, but always with a positive mentality. And I think uh, when you, whenever you, you're going out there and you're putting in the work along with the other guys in the locker room, that we can talk to each other and really challenge each other every single day uh, and, and still be best friends in the locker room and everything like that. And so uh, uh, we have a lot of great veteran our young veteran guys in this locker room have been together for a couple of years now. And, and we want to be great every single time we hit the field. And we, when we're not executing at the level that we expect, uh, obviously we're going to try to challenge each other to be better the next time we're out there. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for sports beat KC listeners 
unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important please visit kansascity.com slash sportsbeatkc offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. You just heard from Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes. Now let's hear from wide receiver McCole Hardman and after him, defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo. Hey, Nicole. So it's not quite prime time, but it's national game, four o'clock on Monday against the Bills, a really good team. How excited are you just to go out there under the lights, uh, play a big game here to get back on track offensively? Yeah, I think any Monday night game is cool. Um, I feel like um, we've been on like, wait, three, it's going to be our third Monday night game. So it's kind of like different, you know, just playing on so many Mondays, but looking forward to the challenge. The Bills got a great team and um, just, you know, go out there and play and hopefully get back on track. Let's go next to Karen Kornacki. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, McCall. Do you sometimes wonder what day it is? Because your schedule has been all over the place. And is it hard to kind of keep some type of routine and preparation when things can change at the last minute, even if you knew that was going to happen, but actually living through it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's very different this year. Um, but I think mainly it's just, you know, just keep, just keep focused and, you know, keep working and just keep grinding and, you know, and they say you play on this day, you know, you prepare for that day. If it's changed, then, you know, just, you gotta, I think it's more of a, a ment- mentally thing and, and just staying focused. I think if you stay, stay focused, stay sharp and be mentally prepared for everything that can happen, I think you'd be just fine. But other than that, man, just go in every day, coming to work and just work and grind and grind and, and it's your time to play. And when you play, well, I then leave it all out there. Go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Cool. We'll see about Sammy, but it's looking like he'll at least be out for this game. How critical do you find this opportunity to show that you can handle maybe some some more of the workload of, of the offense? Um, I mean, I'm prepared, man. I think I did it last year um, with Tyreek going down. I like Sammy went down one one time, too. So I think I'm ready for the for the challenge. I mean, um, it's, it's nothing that I don't think I can handle, you know. Um, I'm practicing hard. I'm doing what I need to do. So whenever I get that chance, the opportunity, I'm going to take advantage of it. And um, I just come down and see what Coach Reed got in plan in store for me, what he want me to do. Um, so whatever they got planned for me, that's what I'm, uh, I'm going to go out there and do and just do it the best I can. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Nicole, along those same lines of, of that first question that Pete just asked you, what was your biggest takeaway last year filling in for Tyreek and Sammy that you're able to use this year? It's sort of like a, what was your biggest learning lesson from filling in last year? Oh, well, I think things are faster. I think it was my rookie year. Uh, I just got kind of like threw into the fire, you know, and um, it was kind of like, oh, overwhelming. But I think this year is more so um, I'm, I'm more experienced. Um, I kind of, everything settled down for me. It's slow for me. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm ready for that role and I'm just waiting for that time to come. So, um, and I don't never want to come as like something like this with an injury or whatever like that. But um, but if it comes like this, then, you know, I'll be ready for that challenge. I, I think I'm going to be ready and um, just go from there. So I think just the experience and that I took from last year and bring it to this year and the different things I can do on the field, especially behind them more of, you know, just making plays when it come my way and, you know, knowing what the offense looking for and what Coach Reed looking for and what Pat looking for. So I think that's just it plays a role in that. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, McCool, a uh, couple things. One, uh, I'm curious just overall what you think maybe teams are doing differently against you guys. You know, there's a lot of conversation, although it's, it seems kind of comedic, people saying what's wrong with the offense when you score 32 points, right? But uh, there's kind of this perception that they're taking away some of the big plays. So I'm curious if you could just kind of uh, give a breakdown of what you think is going on there. And then just, uh, t- you know, what did you do to with Buffalo playing on a Tuesday? You know, you had a chance to watch – your next opponent, usually you guys are always playing at the same time, right? Or on your drive home, maybe if they're playing the late game, something like that. This time you had a night game where you could watch your opponent uh, after you guys had maybe already started digging into things. So I'm curious what you did during uh, to, during that game. Uh, to answer your first question, I think I heard you correctly. If you want to 
say that one more time for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I apologize. Uh, just just what, what they're doing differently. Like, do you do you agree with they're taking away your big plays and what okay. teams are doing differently? I got you now. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, I just think they're trying to show us something we haven't seen before. And um, I think, you know, we, as an offense, we just got to execute better on on certain things that we call and, and just really take what they give us. We know the big play is going to be there, you know, and we just got to do a better job of taking it when they actually give us the big play. I mean, guys playing 30 yards off, so it's kind of hard to, you know, get behind them, but we still managed to do that anyway, you know, so it's it just depends on what they're giving us. They're they trying to take away the deep ball, but you got guys like Travis and, like, at the time, Sammy, that can work underneath the, uh, those guys and, and get open. You know, our main Tyreek might take the top off or whatever it may be. So it just it just got to we just got to be more more efficient as an offense together and taking what they give us and and taking our whatever they give us, take it. And then when it, the big play do present itself, then take that as well. So it's just us on the offense. I think we'd be fine. I don't think they're really doing nothing to stop us or hurt us. We if it's so, we hurt ourselves. And um so and we know that. So we're gonna be better. You know, going into this week and we're gonna practice that and. You know, throw more things at them that they probably haven't seen us do. And um, as far as the the game, um, I think more so seeing on TV is kind of different. You like, oh, whatever. But you definitely can see a whole game and probably get some more film review while you're at home chilling and see what they do, fit, they defense doing, and um, see how they plan and what you can get from it. So yeah, definitely, it, it's a advantage a little bit to see a, a game fully, a whole game and stuff like from you know from your home. You know, so let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, McCole, uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, the, the, not, a lot of the numbers, as you know, show that the Chiefs are a better offensive team when Sammy's on the field as opposed to when he's not. Are there some things you can point to on the stat sheet that, that, that aren't on the stat sheet maybe that Sammy does that sort of makes this offense run? And, and Brad, I'll have one quick follow-up uh, in a minute here. Um, yeah, I think Sammy, he, he does things like he, he blocked very well. He, he's a very good position route runner underneath, you know, that I think people don't really see what he does. He get guys open, you know, especially um because he with guys like him, you really got to draw attention to Sammy because he also is good after the catch as well. So it's not, there's not a guy that you just want to just keep catching the ball over and over like this. So you got to put some attention to him. And um I think, uh, like I was saying earlier with Kelsey and him working underneath me and Tyreek over the top, I think, what what he does is special that, you know, that makes everybody around him better. He's a good leader, you know, he he makes sure that everybody good. And um and like I said, he he blocks very well in certain situations. He he block after the catch and he's good after the catch, you know. So those things are there is things that like me, myself, or like Pringle have to, you know, step up on and why why if he is out of this game or whatever and um step up and, and fill those kind of roles and some of that production that he has. So um yeah, stuff like that you definitely gotta um you know, take notice of what Sammy does, not with the ball in his hands, but what he do without the ball in his hands. Yeah. Now you, you, uh, you're your own player with your own strengths and you, you have your own things you bring to the offense, but do you feel like you can do some of those things? If indeed Sammy's out for a game or two or whatever, you can do some of the things he does and bring some of those qualities to the offense. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I can, I can go out there and block for sure. I think I can get guys open. I, I can do all that that's needed of me, you know what I'm saying? Is Sammy a little bit better blocking than me? Yeah, he's a bigger, you know, a bigger frame, a bigger guy, and um, that can, you know, take on bigger blocks. But, you know, me, myself, I'm um, I'm going to go in there and block and do the best I can to help my guys out. And um, and I'm like, I'm not going to shy away from him. So I definitely got that. I can pick up some of that slack for sure with him, without him being on the field. Let's go to our final two. We've got Sam McDowell and then Steve Walls. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, McCall. Um, how much this off season, I mean, last year you, you were really good at the deep ball. So how much this off season were you really concentrating on just fine tuning those intermediate and short routes? I mean, a lot. I think, um, like you said, I, I was good at it last year. I think the deep ball is pretty, pretty easily, you know, getting behind defenders and, you know, just tracking the ball catch. I think that's kind of easy. I think guys, any guys with speed, I think that's the easy part of the game, but most so just for us. So, the dig routes, the, the stop routes, the curl, the the press, catching in traffic, you know, contested catches is what we got to work on. I think I, I worked on that a lot in the offseason, um, and, and I'm continuing to work on it right now. And even in practice, it's just, you know, focusing on the ball, catching everything. So I think those those tools will kind of make you a better receiver, and I think I know I need to do that better and, you know, pr- improve on that better, which I am and which I'm trying to do. So um, if I keep continuing that, I think if I'm more a threat, intermediate game than the deep ball game open for me, which is pretty easy to me. So go ask Steve Walls. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, what's up, Miko? Uh Travis tweeted out after the game, 
uh, in the loss to the Raiders that you guys, he has to play better. And you responded, it's a team effort and that you have to play better. On those lines, just how do you bounce back after that loss? And, and what's the vibe been like so far this week in the locker room? Um, definitely going to bounce back. It's more so attacking in their practice, you know, you know, accepting what you did wrong, you know, not trying to point fingers. And I think if, if we're accountable for everybody, accountable for ourselves, then we'll bounce back just fine. And like you said, with the tweet, you know, it, it is a team Africa. I don't think everybody played their best game. I don't think you can just single out any, anybody that can just be like, oh, yeah, well, he did his job. You know, it's, it's not that we don't point fingers. I think we're together as a team. We're going to win as a team. We're going to lose as a team. And I just feel like that's that's the mentality we have to have as a team, you know. And um, But this weekend practice, we're going to attack it. We're going there and we're going to get better and better at practice. And, and hopefully that translates back to the game and bounce back with a win. What stands out to you about Josh Allen, in particular, his relationship with Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I mean, look at it. It's obviously this chemistry there, Kim, um, instant, you know, because they really haven't been together a long time, didn't have the offseason. You'd think it would be a little – but they came right out of the blocks, and um, obviously it's because you got a real good talent at quarterback, and he's obviously a talented receiver, but it's impressive to me. It really is. Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, along those same lines with that wide receiver core, especially in light of the type of game that you guys came off last week, it looks like the Bills will get John Brown back this week. He was able to practice yesterday and today. And so what are some of the challenges you see looking at that triple-headed Bills wide receiver core with Diggs, Beasley, and Brown? Yeah, they've got three of them that we got to be concerned about. You can't double them all, then you don't have any players left to – either stop the run or rush the passer. So we got to pick our spots. I mean, you know, we, um, you know, we got guys that we're going to try to line up in their play. We'll try to mix it up a little bit. I'm not so sure there's anything else you can do other than that. And somehow, some way we need to affect the quarterback where we don't give him all that time. And he can, he hit those weapons that he's got downfield. Cause look, they've got them all over the place. And uh, with 15 coming back, it just creates another headache. Go next to Sterin Petro. Go ahead, Sterin. Coach, I'm I'm curious, you know, kind of a follow up on the the speed receivers there with the Bills, uh, the, the Raiders. How much of how uh, the success they had was maybe them giving you a whole new look? We heard kind of some of the other guys talking about, you know, uh, I know uh, Chris Jones talked about some of the new formations they had. Uh, how, how much did they maybe have that game circled, and for four weeks we're playing a little possum and unleashed a lot of new stuff on you there? Well, I, I don't know if it was as much that as um, I'm not sure we executed like we normally do. There's a there's a play in there or call in there I'd like to have back that resulted in one of those long passes. So I don't think that's on the players or anything that the Raiders did. Uh, we didn't execute as well as we had in prior games. And when you do that, and if you don't execute, obviously, in the back end really well, it can result in explosive pass plays. And we just got to make sure we limit those to give ourselves a chance to play better defense. Go next to Therese Paler. Go ahead, Therese. Hey, Spags. How you doing, man? Good. Hey, quick, quick. I got a dorky football question for you. Um, I try to watch a lot of football every week, and it feels like every week I'm watching teams just run over routes like crazy, just yeah. medium range, deep range. I, I was hoping you could help me understand, A, are we seeing more of them, and B, why are they so effective, and C, just generally – how can defensive backs contest these? Yeah, I, I think you're right that we are seeing a lot of them. I think part of it is, look, it's a little bit of a copycat league, and I think some offensive coaches see other guys have success with it. Um, I've always felt with that that, A, you got to have somebody that has the, enough speed to get over there, and if you don't, you better have an offensive line that can give the quarterback time. But I think we got offenses in this league that have that and or the quarterback can – by extra time. And is it challenging to the defense? Yeah. If you're in man, you know, a lot of times it's hard to stay with a guy that fast uh, on an overdrag, especially if you're outside leverage. So there's a lot that goes into it. You'd think that zone coverage would be best against it. Um, and that be going to rely on somebody on the backside having good zone eyes. But I think you're right in what you're saying. There is a, we call them burners or speedos. There's a lot of those around the league now. Uh, I think in with receivers that have the speed to get over there real quick, it makes it real challenging for us. Go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Steve, wanted to ask about your blitzes so far this year. Um, from a percentage standpoint, do you feel like the blitzes are pertaining most to the quarterback in anticipation of a pass? Or how much do you feel like you're having to blitz in order to contain some of the running lanes that might be available to a running back? Yeah, um, as you're asking the question, I'm kind of going back to last year where we kind of added some run blitzes that I thought helped us as the season went on. 
we, we have them for both. Uh, I didn't feel like we could get to it, enough of them last week. Some of it's dictated by down and distance. And like I'm always telling the guys that you earn the right to pe- rush the pass or you got to be good on first and second down to get in those obvious passing situations and then try to do some things that might challenge the quarterback or the offensive line. So part of our challenge is being better on, I think, on first and second down. Let's go next to Harold Koontz. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Spax. Uh, when it comes to, yes, I'm sorry, Sunday's performance, and then you see a performance like that, and then you don't see the defensive line getting any pressure, getting back there. Frank Clark specifically, you know, went up against Colton, a guy that he usually dominated, it went the complete opposite. Does it kind of take you back and you have to reset some things, or do you just kind of say, all right, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Just going forward, we need to just change a couple of things here or there. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at it. That's what we do. That's what that's what coaches do. Um, but you can't hit the panic button. If you believe in what you're doing, you stick with what you're doing, you just do it better. Uh, we didn't do too much different than we had in previous weeks. We just didn't do it as well. Uh, one of the things I shared with the players, and it was amazing to me, from play 21 to play 29, that's a nine-play swing there. We gave up 214 yards and 21 points. That's When you do that in the course of a game, that's hard to recover from. So there were some things that just didn't go right there. Boom, boom. It kind of rolled downhill hill on us. I thought we recovered decently in the third quarter and then just couldn't close it out in the fourth quarter. But do we're not going to panic. You know, We're not going to throw everything out. Uh, we're just going to try to do it better. I think we've got three more hands up. We'll go right down the line. Uh, Todd Lebo, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I know you can't go back and change what happened last week, but what have you seen from your guys this week, meetings on the practice field? Have they responded the way you'd like to see after a game like that? Yeah, great question, and absolutely. Uh, I love this group. There's a lot of character here. There's a lot of pride here, and nobody feels worse about it than the players that were out there playing. Um, in particular, yesterday, we had a walkthrough. It's a 30-minute walkthrough. Uh, we just got done one for today that I thought it was the best we've had in a year and a half that we've been here. So... Uh, they, I've never questioned the, the guy's effort. I've never questioned the preparation. Um, we just got to go out there and make sure that we do things that we have uh, executed during the week and just do them really well. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Good afternoon, Coach. Unique question for you here. Um, you've gone up against Lev Bell five times in your long career. Uh, was curious what you remember about those times and, and that um, having to defend him, and what was your reaction yesterday when you found out now he's on your offensive side of the football? Yeah, I mean, look, at it's great always to uh, accumulate good football players. And I've got a lot of respect uh, for Le'Veon Bell. I mean, I haven't seen him or gone against him in a long time, but I just remember him a headache. I, I, just, I mean, he was so challenging to stop in that what we call dual play that the Pittsburgh Steelers ran where he would just sit back there and pick and weave. And no matter what you did, it felt like you couldn't stop him for less than six, seven yards. So a lot of respect for him. Good football player, I'm sure. Um, our offensive guys over here would be really happy to have them. The last, Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Um, hey, they, they had three big pass plays on Sunday, and we see the final product and what the coverage ends yeah. up in. But I'm wondering, from your perspective, were, did the final product, was that the coverage, as you would call, were guys out of place there, or did they just not execute the coverage? What, what was your breakdown of those? Well, three? one was a bad call, uh, in all honesty, I just I thought I'd put CW in a bad situation. If I had to do that over again, I would not do that. Um, the two others, and they're going back and forth in my head. I mean, look, it wasn't. It, it's never one person on an explosive pass play because typically, a, a long explosive pass play takes a little bit of time to develop. So somebody up front has got to take onus on it. Um, I thought the court. Listen, I'm going to give the quarterback some credit here too. And the wide receivers that those are good football players that we went against. But can we stop those plays? Yes. With the calls that we made, except for the one that I'm talking about that I'm responsible for. Uh, I just believe we've got to do a little bit better, do a little bit faster and we'll be okay. That'll do it for today. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, Chris Fickett, and Savannah Smith. Links to chief stories can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, we got another deal for you, especially for those who want a deep, dive into the star's terrific Chiefs coverage. For a limited time, you can subscribe to Sports Pass for 99 cents a month. That's right, 99 pennies a month. After three months, it auto-renews at $5.99 a month unless you cancel. Here's how you get that. Go to kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. That's kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. Hey, do you want more than just sports coverage? I know I do. Check out the entire Kansas City Star product. 
sports news, features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing, you get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional news, sports, and business coverage with the E-Edition. The details for all of these can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And if you're having trouble finding any of these offers, send me an email at bkirkoff at kcstar.com, and I'll get you to the right place. So whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting and supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports BKC. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back on Tuesday with a complete rundown of the Chiefs-Bills game. Mm-hmm.